Women take the news of an abnormal pap test very seriously, but it's very rare that we find cancer in this clinic. In most cases, we find mild abnormalities that will either go away on their own or require simple treatment that will allow you to have children and uh, have a normal life. So I want to talk to you for a few minutes about why you were sent here today so that you understand what the pap test is about, or what an HPV test is about, and what it means uh, so that you have a healthy understanding of uh, your own situation. So nearly all of us who are sexually active will be exposed to these viruses very commonly in our early 20s. What happens in most cases is that you never know you have this virus. In other words, your body's immune system clears the virus within a couple years. That happens about 90% of the time. And only in about 5 to 10% of the time will that virus stay in the system and cause changes that slowly go from precancer and only if really neglected, and I mean neglected over years or decades, turn into cancer. So the pap test gives us an opportunity to pick up abnormalities when they're very early and very treatable uh, so that the treatments have very little impact on your fertility or health. As I mentioned before, HPV virus is very, very common. And if you look at how common it is by age group, we see in young women uh, from age 15 to 25 that prevalence means how common it is. We find it in about 40 to 50 percent of young women that age. As women age, it becomes less likely that we find it. But at any age, women remain susceptible to pick up this virus just by having normal uh, sexual relations. And this is a very simple graph which shows you the difference between HPV infection and green. CIN2 and 3 is cervical precancer. That's what the pap test picks up. And cervical cancer in red. So what we see here is that HPV infection is very, very common and particularly in women in their late teens and early 20s. That's where it peaks. But that women remain susceptible to this virus for their whole lives. With time, women can develop, if they don't have the pap test, uh, precancer of the cervix. And that tends to be detected somewhere in the mid-30s and then tapers off. What's really important is that that's also very common, but much less common than infection with the virus. So a very simple message. Most women who pick up this virus won't develop any abnormalities. As I showed before, the immune system clears the virus without you even being aware of it. Cervical cancer, as you see here, is actually very rare. To give you an understanding, it's probably at least three or 400,000 cases of cervical precancer that are diagnosed and treated in Canada every year, but only about 1,000 to 1,500 cases of cancer. This is also a very important slide, and I think it helps um, you as a patient understand why you're here today and what we're likely to find. So even this looks, though this looks kind of busy, it's actually quite simple. In color are the various categories of abnormality for which women are referred to our clinic. For example, you were sent here today with the most common abnormality. You were tested for HPV virus, you were found to be a carrier, and your pap test was mildly abnormal. ASCUS stands for Atypical Cells of Undetermined Significance. It means your pap test is abnormal, but we're not sure exactly why. So what we see in this side here is what's the likelihood over the next two years, not that you're going to develop cancer, that you're going to develop precancer. So this tells us today in your case, you're here today with the most common abnormality of the pap test, that over the next two years, you only have about a 10 to 12% chance of developing precancer, not cancer. And it's important again to remember that not all women with cervical precancer go on to develop cancer. In many cases that goes away too. The pap test, as you know, is uh, something that you go to see your gynecologist about and you came here today because your pap test was abnormal. So the pap test detects abnormalities of the cells of the skin of the cervix and it enables us to detect cervical precancer at a very early stage where we can treat it without any effect on your fertility. You may have also had an HPV test. We do that very commonly these days. But you have to understand that having HPV virus doesn't mean you have any abnormality. So in fact, the majority of women we see in our clinic who are HPV positive have no detectable abnormality. So there's a difference between having HPV and having an abnormality. We're going to look at your cervix with a microscope. We're going to put some vinegar on it. That's right, vinegar. And it helps areas that are abnormal turn white so we can identify them and take a tiny little biopsy that takes a few seconds and causes at most a teeny little cramp. 
This is not a painful or difficult exam. I want you to know that so that you're not worried. This is probably a good opportunity though to talk about HPV vaccination. So as you may or may not know, we have vaccines against HPV virus. These have been shown to be very effective and very safe in women your age. So as a young woman, uh, we strongly encourage vaccination against this very preventable infection. Um, all the evidence we have so far shows these vaccines to be safe and highly effective, both in prevention of HPV infection and actually in prevention of precancer. So even though today we don't find an abnormality, I think it's a good opportunity for you to do some research into this and to strongly consider getting vaccinated.